Mario Kart has come a long way. From the classic days of the Super Nintendo, to the VR setup they rolled out for a while, to now an AR setup that lets you transform your house into its own track with Mario Kart Live. That's honestly super crazy, and the possibilities are truly endless. But throughout the history of Mario Kart, there have been a few weird stages that have stuck in my mind. Perhaps it's just the fact that Halloween is drawing near as I'm sitting down to make a Mario Kart video, but I've been super focused on the scary places that Mario Kart has to offer. The Boo Houses on the Super Nintendo were stages I really, really didn't like, but the Luigi's Mansion tracks were ones I did. However, there is one course in particular that really caught my interest when it comes to just generally feeling eerie, and that's the Twilight House. Yes, that odd battle stage on Mario Kart DS. It doesn't go out of its way to be spooky from a ghost perspective, but man, why does this place feel so dark? What was the inspiration behind creating this place? From eerie signs to even a sealed room. Now, I'm gonna need you to suspend disbelief for this video and go full on nerd with me. If you don't like overthinking Mario games, then you might as well dip out now. But if you like strange analyses on your favorite games, you're of course in the right place. This is the weird tale of the Twilight House from Mario Kart DS. Enjoy. Where to begin, where to begin. So first up, for those who watched my video on Mario Kart DS's Lost Beach, you'll know that I have a big dry spell in my Mario Kart history because I never had access to a Nintendo DS or 3DS until later on in life. So while all of you were driving around on battle mode playing Shine Runners in the middle of Spooky Town, I was not. But that doesn't mean as an onlooker that I didn't take note of something strange I was seeing. And that is what's weird about the Twilight House. The music here in battle mode is absolutely not fitting at all. It's like being in a big spooky house and turning on some hardcore jams, and suddenly the place isn't so scary anymore. But strip that away, and yikes. And although this place lacked any sort of ghosts, it was actually more creepy, because it didn't cater to the normal haunted house level tropes in a Mario game. So let's actually talk about the stage. So when you load into Twilight House, the first thing you'll notice is that you're suspended above a black void surrounded by pine trees. The blood red sky instantly makes the place feel a bit uneasy. But I guess being suspended above a black void doesn't help either. The Wii European website states the following, quote, Weave in and out of a spooky house, taking care to stay away from the edge as you battle against the backdrop of a spooky red sky, end quote. Twilight House is basically constructed of what someone could call two different buildings. You could argue it's just one, but they seem different enough. One is a square hall without any real windows, and the other is a multi-tiered house or lodge that has a good amount of windows. Altogether, you basically have nine separate zones that you can weave in and out of. Outside of that, you have an outer deck, which is quite dangerous because there is nothing protecting you from falling off. The area is beautifully constructed with brick, glowing lights, and giant lanterns. However, there's quite a lot of bizarre things going on here. So let's start off with the first. The square building is strange because it has four openings, but each opening has a massive iron gate above it. It's strange because it almost looks like this area could be used to detain someone and lock them up. Someone just casually drives in and suddenly all the gates close around them. One of the gates is higher than the other three as well, but none of these gates actually close, which is strange because the gates continue up the wall quite a bit. The designers made it so they extend far enough up the wall that the gates could actually be closed despite them never being closed in the game. Perhaps at one point it was possible to get stuck in here? Who knows? But exiting either of these two inner gates leads us to the next perplexing thing, the dark shine sprites. Okay, so there's something really unsettling about the black shine sprites that are scattered around this area. They adorn the tops of the gates, and there are stained glass windows that show them off as well. Clash them with the blood red lighting of this level, and you have a very sinister stage. But why? We don't really encounter negative shine sprites in other Mario games, at least to my knowledge. We've run into stars in the Mario Party series, which are evil stars that you want to avoid at all costs, but what about the star version of a shine sprite? Shine sprites gave hope to Isle Delfino. They were essentially the guardians of the island. If shine sprites instill hope, then that can only mean one thing for this demonic looking inversion. Whoever inhabits this Twilight House has negative intentions. And given that there's both stained glass windows and ornaments that show off the negative shine sprites, I can only imagine that the dark shine sprites are something that they worship. But the mystery goes deeper. So at first glance, it may seem that this entire level is largely accessible. After all, all the rooms per se are essentially just walled off sections that you can pop in and out of. But this isn't actually the case, because if we were to draw a grid over this stage, isolating each of its independent areas, we'd have a 3x3 grid with 8 accessible squares. However, the center square is off limits. And that's really what is super strange about the Twilight House. The center house boasts two rows of windows and a small attic window where the dark shine sprite decal resides. 
on the perpendicular side, we have two other windows as well. But regardless of where you are in this level, on any of the four sides of the center structure, there are no doors. A creepy red light glows from the inside, but there's no actual way to get inside. And this is strange because other haunted levels, like say Luigi's Mansion, feature a multitude of doors built within the level even if the player can't go inside of them. To purposely exclude doors is bizarre. Now, one might say that perhaps this is the second floor and the door is actually beneath this giant top balcony. After all, we can't see what's below us since everything is pitch black. And that's actually pretty sound logic except for one thing. When Twilight House was reused for Mario Kart Wii, they decided to finally show us what's around the house. And the map is exactly the same minus the skybox area. And it turns out that the entire house is suspended on a platform held up by four giant pillars. The platform itself is only two blocks thick. And if we take the camera, we can see that the only thing beneath the platform is vacant space. There is no way to get inside of the Twilight House. But the Mario Kart Wii version did add something else that the DS version did not. And that's flooring. So Mario Kart DS, if we move the camera inside of the house, we can see that it's just a black void. But in Mario Kart Wii, we can see that the floor glows a dark red. This is odd because this coloring doesn't exist anywhere else in the level except for the center floor. You can't see in the windows either, so it's definitely a useless visual. Now, there may be a simple explanation to all of this. I mean, it's not simple because it's still creepy, but it could explain some of the mystery behind this cursed place. One could argue that a house that has no doors is a house that isn't meant for humans. While Mario couldn't just waltz up and get inside, a spirit would have no issues entering or leaving the Twilight House. Given how eerie this level is, it would make sense that this is a den of sinister spirits. But of course, the doors within Luigi's Mansion and other ghost stages conflict with this logic. At this moment, we have no explanation to what the mysterious dark shine sprites mean either. Is this some creepy cult? Is the Twilight House somehow an extension of Twilight Town from Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door? There's a lot of unexplained things here. And honestly, we don't have a concrete answer. No further info has been presented, so the mystery just sort of ends there. But I would love to hear your take on this level. Do you have fond memories battling here? Got your own theory about what this place is about? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.